Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. In this Shoe Shine Sunday episode, I have Jason Dornstar here with me. Uh, Jason's in from Denver. Right. Uh, some of you may know his uh, Shoe Shine channel on YouTube, uh, Dornstar. He is a, a prolific a YouTuber, an entrepreneur, and shoe shine aficionado. And so we uh, share many of the same passions together, of course, keeping men's uh, shoes looking great. And so we thought we'd have him in here and just chat about shining shoes. As part of this collaboration, uh, we're also running a joint social contest together. So visit hangerproject.com slash giveaway uh, and enter for a chance to win a complete Saphir Shoe Shine starter kit. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for coming to join us. Thanks for having me. So, you know, you've been shining shoes for a long time. Uh, we're going to sit down in our Shoe Shine Sunday series and we're going to shine a pair together. So, um, you know, why don't we uh, both introduce what pair we're shining together? And, uh, you know, since you're the guest, why don't you go first? Well, thank you, Kirby. Uh, here I've got a pair of double monk straps from Belvedere. Uh, I've, they are full quill up here on, on the cap toe and a little bit of the half quill or um, less quill. I don't even know. I think it's the, the leg. The leg. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. I don't even know. Yep, so um, beautiful yeah, ostrich. Not too bad. Uh, the double monk is very fashionable, easy to get on and off, and uh, pretty fashionable during the summer and spring months. Yeah, so I'm actually having a pair of boots made by uh, Lee Miller at Texas Traditions that we're going to have some ostrich leg. Nice. Um, I think ostrich quill, you know, the full quill is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very elegant. You know, we see a lot of it here in Texas, of course, with cowboy boots. For sure. So do you shine a lot of that in, uh, in Denver? Do you Mostly on the western boots. Western so boots. And uh, kind of the yeah. fashion stuff like that. Um, but I like it on a dress shoe. It doesn't look bad. It's a little more pop to it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I've got... I've got a pair. This is my first pair of bespoke shoes. I had these made uh, by George Cleverly. These are whole cuts, right? Uh, so um, they are not seamless, right? So mm -hmm. it does have a seam in the back. Uh, but whole cuts, which is a beautiful classic shoe and a burgundy uh, with a nice uh, medallion on the front. So these are some workhorses. I've had these, um, oh gosh, four or five years almost. So uh, they need a little bit of love. You know, I'm starting to get some cracking on the mirror shine at the front. And, uh, you know, I wear these often just because, uh, you know, gosh, they're, I've had them so long, they are just so comfortable. So yeah, I like that kind of marbleization that's going on. Yeah, so this too. is what they call their museum calf, mm -hmm. um, which you see a little bit of the antiquing effect. Mm -hmm. And so that's actually uh, dyed into the leather. Um, so this isn't a, a function of polish, which is another way that you can uh, produce antiquing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it gives it a little bit of visual interest. I like it. You know, I really like burgundy because... You know, burgundy and, uh, you know, mahogany are, is, is one of the few colors that kind of spans the bridge between, you know, navies and blacks, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, a little more versatile. Yeah, it's more versatile. Yeah. So you can wear something like this with a navy suit, but you can also wear it with black if you want some color. Mm -hmm. pop, versus yeah. traditionally, I mean, you couldn't really ever get away with the brown pair of shoes uh, with gray or black trousers, uh, but you can with burgundy. So exactly. uh, nice little pop. And I guess, you know, I've got a lot of black shoes. It's nice to have something with some color. A little splash. Yeah. yeah. So we've got some Saphir shoe polish, which you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, you've got some Renovateur, some black cream. We've got the Pat Deluxe and then some mirror gloss. Um, have you used the mirror glass before? I have not. Why don't you tell me a little okay. bit about it? Okay. Well, so that'll be exciting. Yeah. So the mirror gloss is, um, uh, you know, it's a product that we helped develop with Saphir. And it's a much harder wax than the Pat Deluxe, uh, which helps accelerate the mirror shine process. So, you know, if someone is looking to develop a mirror shine on their toes or rear quarters, you know, it can take forever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the mirror glass really helps accelerate that by uh, helping you build that hard wax foundation. So awesome. it'll be interesting to see you get into that uh, whenever we it. reach that point because it's a totally different feel than normal wax polish. Cool. So um, I guess let's get started. I've got some burgundy polish and right. we've got some chamois and brushes here. Uh, I've got, you know, a normal, this is our 12 ounce cotton chamois. And then we have our uh, High Shine Chamois. I don't know if you've ever used that. Um, this is a, made out of cotton shirting. It's a real high, tw high density weave. Mm -hmm. But uh, I enjoy applying my cream polishes with the, the more plush cotton chamois and then my wax polishes with this. Okay. Uh, and it's essential for the mirror shine process, cool. uh, which we'll get into later. So Jason, um, I guess give us a little bit, I mean, for those that aren't familiar with your channel, I mean, how did you... How did you get into shining on, on YouTube? And well, I mean, you've got a, a big just channel. Just chance, really. Both I, of us, right? Yeah. I just, I'm a creative soul, and uh, I like to share what I know. Um, I saw a couple of the people making videos out there and figured out to give it a go and uh, kind of turned into something a lot bigger than I ever expected. Kind of grew into a monster, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's what's exciting about YouTube is really the capacity to reach people is, is pretty profound. I mean, I think, you know, it started as a three-month project for us. Yeah. You know, really, we were originally developing content just for, um, for Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, because we needed videos, you know, for our Facebook page. And then we soon quickly realized that, you know, YouTube had more potential than Facebook did, uh, you know, for us in terms of connecting with people interested mm -hmm. and uh, taking care of their shoes. That's a great place for really figuring out anything you want to do in, in the world, you know? Yeah. So how did you get into... Um, Shoe shining. I mean, what's your what's your story? I mean, what? Tell us your journey. You grew up in. You live in Denver now. Yeah, grew up in Minneapolis. Uh, moved out to Denver in 2005, and worked for Nordstrom the whole time uh, since 2003. Um, got into shoe shining about three years ago uh, when I was out at the airport um, in about 2011 and acted like a shoe shiner. Okay. Um, poached on the shoe shine stand at Denver International Airport. Um, took a few customers, had a lot of fun. Played my little freak, Abigail, catch me if you can. Okay. And uh, and from then, I just kind of was very intrigued with the work because there's a very gratifying aspect of yeah. of seeing a tangible end, end result, you know. Um, and it's service too. I mean, especially in a shoe shine stand. Yeah. I mean, get to hear a lot of stories. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're at Nordstrom's then, mm -hmm. and that's where your shine stand is. And how many days a week? I mean, you're, if someone goes into the Nordstrom's in Denver, they'll see you? Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm there full time. Yeah. Okay. And then how do you split your time? I mean, because the channel, your you know, you're shining stands in the back, or your shining shoes in the back, mm -hmm. uh, versus on an actual shine stand, you do have some of your ASMR videos you know, in the stand. Yeah. How do you kind of split your time? I mean, people drop off shoes? Oh, they drop off a lot of shoes, yeah. We get uh, probably about 30% of our businesses drop really? offs, yeah. And uh, last year I did about 5,000 pairs. Did you really? Yeah. Goodness so gracious. Just really trucking along. More than me. Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. So, so that's unbelievable. And then, so, I mean, describe the process. I mean, so, you know, three years ago, I mean, you know, that's relatively recent. Mm -hmm. I'm um, still learning, man. Yeah. So, I mean, what's that journey been like? I mean, you know, learning and, you know. Uh, it's been It's been amazing, really. I think, you know, I've always been kind of an artistic person um, and working with brushes of some capacity is always fun um, and just kind of working with your hands you get to see an end result and it's just a lot more gratifying than uh, sitting and staring at a computer screen. Yeah that's day. for sure. Unless if you're watching shoe shine. Yeah well unless right. you're watching our shoe shine videos. That's right. So that's great so then you know you like to apply your polish by hand so tell me a little yeah. bit because you know one of the things that you know we really talk about the channel on the channel is that you know, the way that your shoes are shined by someone on a shine stand is really fundamentally different than the way, you know, most people shine shoes at home, mm -hmm. right? Because someone gets in a stand and it's, you know, it's a little bit more transactional in and out. Mm -hmm. It's kind um, of cranking them out. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, you, you have got a line of people that want to get their shoes shined. Yeah, it's, it's a balance. You really got to balance actually taking care of the shoe and the leather um, and keeping that in mind with also keeping... Do you have more time to do that those. whenever you take the shoes in the back? Oh, uh, yeah, but you also do have to balance the customers on the sales floor, too. So mm -hmm. there are times where you do get interrupted and kind of have to bounce back between. Really? Um, but, yeah, I do I do like working out on the shine stand more just because you get that interaction and create that experience with mm -hmm. your clients, um, which is what it's all about. You know, you go to a nice barbershop and you know, yeah, get that kind absolutely. of experience, you know. Um, just creating that experience is, is kind of what it's all about. I mean, I really appreciate it. And this is one of the things that we preach, you know, here at, at, the, at Kirby Allison is that, you know, you can afford to invest in quality if you know how to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And there's just, you know, there's a dignity to that ritual of kind of caring for things and doing mm -hmm. something well. And so, you know, I think a, a man, you know, has, you know, doesn't have very many relationships in his life. You know, you know he's got his doctor, his barber, mm -hmm. you know, his tailor, shirt maker, shoemaker if he's lucky. Um, and then, you know, having a good shine guy. Mm -hmm is another one of those kind of just kind of sacred male, kind like uniquely escape. male relationships. Yeah. I mean, I remember my first job, you know, here in Dallas, uh, you know, was downtown in a high rise. And, you know, the guy at the bottom of the building, you know, that ran the shine stand became a good friend because, yeah. you know, I saw him every week. We yeah. had an opportunity to kind of hang out and build some rapport, you know, yeah. build a relationship. And what I really appreciated about him is, you know, he was shining shoes and, you know, there's a lot of similarities with you also. Uh, you know, you shine shoes, which, you know, there's a lot of people that do that job and just don't think about it or don't put any passion into it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he really committed himself to, you know, doing a great job. Yeah. And so there's a lot of, 
Yeah, I think that. everybody has a story too, and what's what's unique about it. A lot of my customers kind of always, and some of them repeat themselves, but they kind of <laughs> they bring it back to a childhood experience of whether you know they would be shining their dad's shoes before church on a Sunday, or um, you know whether they served in the military. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. You know, kind of built that experience and part of their ritual. You know, and uh, some keeping that order and consistency in their routine. Do you think people still do that? I mean, do you still? get the sense that more or less people, you know, are, are, you know, have a ritual of shine their shoes at home. I don't think a lot of people really like to take the time to do a lot of things nowadays. I think we live in a microwave society where a lot of people just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, expect things to be done at the drop of a dime. But, yeah. uh, but it's kind of a chance to have my customers come in and, and have that opportunity to slow down a little bit and uh, just kind of take a break from, from their daily routine. Yeah, because it is a commitment to time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how long does an average, you know, shine take for you if um, someone's in the stand? You know, obviously we're not doing this type of work here um, with every customer with uh, the mirror shine and kind of approach. Um, I usually spend anywhere from about 10 to 15 minutes at the most. Yeah. Yeah. But that's still 10 to 15 minutes, you know, it's not an insignificant amount of time. Right, yeah. Um, Enough time to hear a story or two? Yeah, absolutely. What products, I mean, you know, you're a customer of the Hangar Projects, one of the ways that, you know, we know you. Um, I mean, you know, whenever you first started shining shoes, I mean, I mean we were using Kiwi. I mean, what was kind of your no, shiny there? No, definitely not. <laughs> um, I started with Meltonian cream polishes. Okay. Uh, I was working a little bit with the, um, with the Angelus waxes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so kind of just dabbled secret, around. Secret uh, weapon Grams you have there. Nylon, yeah. Okay. Just pulled it from a drawer this uh -oh. time. Um, but yeah, I, I find that this nylon, it's what I'm used to working with. Uh, kind and of you're using this for the mirror shine? Yeah. Or for the toe? Mm -hmm. do, you, you do you use any water ever, or is it just? Um, I did try a little bit with the uh, with the mirror gloss here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have much experience with it, but I did see you doing it in your videos yeah. too, so I figured I'd give it a try. For sure. But yeah, it does, it does kind of help it spread around a little bit more, like you were saying. Yeah, so that's the final buff. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, the friction of the nylon. It's really amazing, really glissages uh, the waxes quite effectively. Mm -hmm. We really don't use any nylons here. We use the High Shine Chamois, but, yeah. you know, it's, I've used it before, and it, it definitely works. Yeah. Did you so, use any cream or just waxes? I used a little bit of cream here on the body of the shoe, yeah. and then just kind of stuck with the waxes mm -hmm. on the toe and the, and the rear quarter there. So I've seen a lot of people, the way that they wrap, and I'll let you take your time once you get there, maybe you can explain it, um, but how you wrap this around your fingers, maybe you could explain that when you... Yeah, for sure. The point there. Yeah, there's definitely a technique to that. And it even depends on the shape of the chamois. Cool. So I'm going to start using the mirror gloss. All right. So you'll see, I mean, touch that. Mm -hmm. It's like... It's pretty hard. It's yeah. really hard. Yeah. So this, I mean, you really have to kind of work it into your chamois. And do you do a dab of water first before you do You know, it? so I'll apply it um, without any water, mm -hmm. right, because you're building up that uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. And then I'll buff it uh, with the water and kind of a clean area of the chamois. So this, these shoes had a little bit of a mirror shine on it. I took some of it off whenever I was shining with the uh, cream polish because the solvents and the polish will help you remove some of the old waxes. So that's why I was working the toes a little bit extra to kind of remove some of that. So now I have to build mm -hmm. it up. Cool. Um, so we'll get to see this come together. Uh, well, I'll, I'll race you. All right. <laughs> Let's go. So one of the things I love about your ASMR channel is that, um, you know, it's your craft. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's authentic. Like, it's you doing your job. And that's really kind of how it came about, wasn't it? That, you know, you were posting these videos of just you shining shoes because, you know, you thought that'd be interesting. And then yeah, other just, people kind of tagged it out as saying, oh, that's kind of relaxing. Yeah, and it really kind of took me by surprise because I never really heard of it. And yeah, well, neither of, had I before I think we saw your channel. But yeah, and, you <laughs> know, after the Super Bowl commercial this year, I think we all kind yeah, of it's are gone mainstream, a better right? idea of what's going on. But um, I think it's really awesome. It's a, it's a really loyal fan base, um, a really strong community. And, uh, and just kind of hearing these people's comments and, and kind of reading what they had to say, why it was ASMR um, is very interesting because I guess, you know, there's the whole other niche of capturing the sounds and the whispers and mm -hmm. stuff, but um, here, you know, I'm sitting here working um, and I think the visual kind of um, capturing a tangible um, art, you yeah. know, where someone is using their hands mm -hmm. to, to enhance something in the way it looks and taking care of it at the same time kind of gives a different energy, a different spin on it than just kind of someone eating, you know, Cheetos. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think it's something that can inspire some people to take time to take care of what yeah. they own. You know, just kind of bringing it back to, you know, I'm, I'm creating a different result out of something that already yeah. exists. And uh, I think that's one of the gratifying things about just trade and craftsmanship in general is that, you know, you can see the progression of a pair of shoes since before you shined it to after. And there's yeah. a real gratification to knowing that you've physically affected something yeah. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of the analogies for me is shaving. Uh, which you probably don't know very well since you have a nice right. beard. I used to have a huge beard yeah. uh, back in the day. But, you know, I shave with a double-edged razor. Okay. And, um, you know, it requires a little bit of skill and effort. I mean, you For cut sure. yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, you've got to take a little bit more time. There's an art to it. But the flip side is, is like the end result, not only is it better, but there's a gratification in knowing that, like, you know, it took a little bit of work to do. Mm -hmm. And so I think with shoe shines, I mean, that's the inspiration for the shoe shine Sunday is, like, you know, how do we hearken back to that ritual of just slowing down, taking a little bit of time, you know, doing something you enjoy, putting on some music, having a good conversation, yeah. and doing something versus just sitting, you know, sitting on a couch staring at a screen. Right. You know, it's one of the things that we really love about these chats is the opportunity to, you know, sit down and kind of have a shared experience. Yeah, share the appreciation. And, the um, yeah. you know, and do something. Yeah. The art of the shine. Kirby, tell me about uh, how you wrap that cloth around your, your hand. Like so, um, so yeah. So this is the high shine chamois. You can see I've got a lot of spots kind of all around it. And, um, you know, what's nice about the high shine chamois, it really has a lot of qualities similar to the nylon in that it's kind of a, a tight weave. It's not going to lint like mm -hmm. the 12-ounce chamois will. I just take it around my fingers, pull it tight, and then you want to kind of twist it you know, just to kind of pull it. And you want to flat, like one of the mm -hmm. tricks no is. Wrinkles, huh? And so there's a little bit of just, you know, technique to twisting it not at the bottom, mm -hmm. but trying to get that twist at the top. Okay. So that it, that's where it kind of pulls, pulls okay. tight. Nice. And so this was a friend of mine, you know, in London who was a shoe shine patina guy, you know, asked him what his trick was. Yeah. And he would take his old Christian Dior shirts that, like, you know, he'd worn through or something, cut them up, and that's what he used as his trusty shoe shine, Sammy. Yeah. yeah, and I said, well, I don't have any shirts I can cut up right now, but <laughs> maybe these are something Especially we can no have Christian made. Dior, huh? Yeah, no <laughs> Christian Dior's, that's for sure. And so that was the inspiration for this. And you see a lot of, you know, it's funny, it's like you've got your nylon stocking. Yeah. You know, I mean, every guy that is uh, a real talented, you know, shoe shiner, I mean, even the guys that have just been in the military and been mm -hmm. doing it forever. Get the cotton balls out. You know, they yeah. all have their own, like, secret trick. Right, yeah. And so that's one of the funny things. I mean, you've seen the footage from the uh, World Championship of Shoe Shining. Mm -hmm. How's that coming? I'm just pretty good. I'm a, probably a little bit of a slower start than you. No, you're good. Um, but, you know, they all show up there, you know, and they, yeah. like, pull out of their pocket their, like, their secret, secret weapons. weapon. Yes. You, know, they, you know, and that's actually the only thing that you're allowed to bring is your own chamois. Oh, okay. Right? So they provide all the polishes, you cool. know, they've got the same brushes, but everyone can bring their, their, secret, their secret weapon, their chamois into the game. So tell me a little bit about the competition. How do you guys judge it on what criteria and how do you find your... your Contestants. Yeah, well, I mean, so it's a really interesting idea. I mean, the world championship of shoe shining. I think, you know, a friend of mine, Jesper, started it, you know, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think he was widely ridiculed, you know, in the beginning of just like a world championship in shoe shining. I mean, how pretentious could that be? But it, it's really been fascinating to kind of see it take a life of its own. I mean, you know, you, we had people the first year, you know, from Singapore, mm -hmm. you know, Japan. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these places, you know, come and enter continental Europe. Um, we have our first uh, American contestant or finalist this year. That's pretty exciting. Okay. Um, and I think one of the things that's interesting is to just see how, you know, you've got something that really is transcultural. I mean, you've got these people from all these countries, all you know, kind of that. coming together and, you know, kind of sharing their passion on shining shoes. I mean, I guess we all wear shoes and... We all shine them. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that's also fascinating is just, you know, the Asians, like the Japanese, the John people Chung from Singapore. Yeah. yeah. You know, just, you know, it's a fascinating, the Asian culture, just how, you know, kind of serious and respectful they are. I mean, they really... They take a lot of pride in their work. Yeah, they take mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of pride. You know, something, you know, as 
simple as shining a pair of shoes. I mean, you know, most Americans probably never even know the name of the guy that shines their shoes, mm -hmm. never do it themselves. And you've got these guys that have like dedicated their entire life and are traveling halfway across the world on their own money, yeah. you know, to enter a competition. And you see the work that they do in 20 minutes and it's incredible. Which again, you know, like these world championships at the turn of the century at the World's Fair existed. There was a world okay. championship in everything. Oh. And so that idea, I guess, was largely lost, you know, during the 20th century for whatever reason, probably as a result of kind of mass industrialization where you had kind of all these tradespeople no longer were being honored or exalted. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the turn of the 20th century, I mean, there was gold medals given out and kind of all these different tradescrafts. And so what is going on right now with the World Championship of Shoemaking actually is very historically significant in that, you know, it's the first time that that, you know, a contest like that, you know, really kind of exemplifying and honoring, you know, shoe makers has been resurrected. And so it's done a lot to promote the industry and, yeah. you know, gain interest. And you know, it's great. I think there's such an art in, in craftsmanship. I mean, because whenever you have something, you know, that's been made by hand or done by hand, I mean, you know, you honor the person, you know, that's doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, you know, a, a dignity in that, you know, whereas, you know, kind of the mass throwaway culture, you know, it's totally it's anonymous. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, you're getting a new pair of shoes every single year that are made in some country you've never even been to, much right. less, you know, know how it's being made versus, you know, investing in something, you know, cherishing it and taking care of it. And it will last you a lot longer. Yeah. How does that, I mean, you've, you know, you've had a lot of guys come through your shine stand. I mean, what are some of the stories that they tell? I mean, what's your sense of like how people relate to their shoes? I mean, I'm sure it runs the gamut to those that never even think of it versus those that, yeah, you, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that take a lot of pride in their wardrobe. And it's kind of like, um, kind of like a, a statement piece, you know. Um, here are these shoes that I'm working on are kind of a loud style. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of guys that are more conservative and wear more of the Allen Edmonds kind of traditional American style. Um, but in Denver, you know, it's kind of in the middle of America and it's not as as fashion hub as mm -hmm. Dallas might be. Um, but I think there's a lot of guys that uh, are just kind of buying the hundred dollar shoes and then, you know, every few months they'll buy another pair. And so you see a lot of those come through your shop. I mean, what does a hundred dollar pair of shoes look like in three or six months? Not too good. Not too good. Not too good. Yeah, they, you get what you pay for, really. I think um, when you buy a nice shoe, you get good quality leather, good craftsmanship, a nice sole where you can resole it uh, with a Goodyear Welt sole. Mm -hmm. um, so those kind of things, you really, you get what you pay for. And uh, you don't always have to buy a top designer name to get good quality. Absolutely not, right? I mean, I think that in a lot of ways what we stand for is kind of like the anti-designer. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think that a lot of the designer shoes, really all you're buying is a designer name. Mm -hmm. You know, but something like an Allen Edmonds or, <coughs> you know, a Gaziano Girling or a Cleverly or a Alden or, I mean, I, you know, there's so many, so many different brands. You know, you're actually getting something that, you know, someone actually made with pride to, to last. Yeah, they got their uh, reputation at stake where Bigger brands can kind of make a few mistakes and it kind of goes under the bridge, you know? I think with those smaller companies, they have uh, more of that pride and ownership into each pair, you know? You got a nice little shine yeah, you got me. going on there. I really like the deep tones. It kind of accentuates that kind of Merlot color a yeah, little bit. Like yeah. Yeah. So Kirby, what's your favorite smelling shoe polish? Uh, well, it's definitely severe. Yeah. Uh -huh. what, uh, what color is your favorite? Because I noticed they Oof. all have different notes. Oh, do you, do you really? Yeah, the yeah. red mahogany is my favorite. Is it really? Yeah. That's funny. I've never, um, I've never taken to noticing the no difference in notes. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try that. The blue is actually that. It's uh, gonna be a good new. night for me. Yeah. I'll be high on, uh, Crack high on turp turpentine. There you go. Um, so really, do you notice a difference between the polishes? Actually, I do. Yeah. Uh, the neutral kind of has more of a tart smell to it. The the mid, uh, the marine blue, I believe it's called, mm -hmm. um, has almost like a, I don't know if it's just kind of the association with the color, but I think of blueberries yeah. when I crack a can of that. <laughs> yeah. What do you, do you play around with the colors a lot? Will you use navy on black and mahogany on That's black? That's a great question. Actually, yeah, I was teaching a class um, at my friend's uh, hotel that he works at. Um, 
uh, they wanted to learn a little bit, the bell, uh, mm -hmm. bell hop team or the um, ballet team wanted to learn a little bit about shoe shining. So I went and taught them. And actually on this pair here, I was using the, the marine uh, navy blue Saphir Pat Deluxe mm -hmm. uh, wax um, to kind of deepen the tone a little bit. And I think... Because it does um, affect the tone. It does. It definitely affects how the color refracts off of the... Uh, yeah, off of the, the instead polish. of using black, it's not so opaque. You mm -hmm. know, it kind of gives them more of that deep tone. Especially like um, some customers, I, I like to use a navy on even a, a deep kind of merlot burgundy shade like this to mm -hmm. really kind of darken it a little bit, but also keep that kind of um, kind of that deep tone within there. What's your favorite color to shine with? Do you have a favorite? Um, kind of in the red families, definitely that mahogany tone. Um, I like using the light brown uh, from Sapphire. I think it kind of... Light brown's beautiful. It is. I mean, on a shoe that really eats up that light brown, Yeah. I mean, you're able to see so much of the natural leather mm -hmm. kind of shine through. Give any antiquing or kind yeah. of burnishing, mm -hmm. not burnishing, but any antiquing that you, you do with using darker polishes on lighter shoes to... Mm -hmm. Just that burnishing technique, um, that's what I refer to it as when you kind of darken the toe a little bit. So what um, will you, if you're on a light brown pair of shoes, will mm -hmm. you use a medium brown or a dark brown? Like which polish do you use um, to I really... I don't go too dark. I think, you know, less is more sometimes. So if you try to go to one extreme from a lighter brown, mm -hmm. um, it kind of tends to be, um, sometimes you get a little blotchiness going on. You have to kind of kind of start from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, so I just try to like go maybe a shade darker. Um, just to kind of deepen it a little bit. So if it's a light brown, you'll use a medium brown. Do you use the wax or the creams for that? Um, I use the waxes, actually. I used okay. to use more of the creams to kind of try to, if the shoe's completely dry like mm -hmm. we talked about before, um, you might need to use a little bit of that uh, kind of cognac colored uh, sapphire cream wax or cream polish um, to kind of start from a nice kind of slate. So yeah. when you paint a house, you get the primer going mm -hmm. and then you put the paint over. Yeah. I kind of like to think of that as the same yeah. aspect. You know, you kind of get Absolutely. the color back and then you accentuate it a yeah. little bit more with the wax. But what I say is that, you know, the cream is really for pigment. Mm -hmm. You know, because the waxes have such a light pigment that, I mean, you could use black wax on a light brown pair of shoes and, mm -hmm. you know, it would certainly tint the color, but it wouldn't mm -hmm. totally change it. Right. Um, but if you really need pigment, if what you're looking for co is color, then absolutely the cream. Mm -hmm. Do kind of you use cream on all the shoes or just? I do, yeah, on most of the shoes. Um, there is probably not an exception that I don't. Um, so you always do a, a cream you know, application first. Mm -hmm. I focus on and then finish with the wax. It, conditioning it and, hide, er, and protecting it. Mm -hmm. uh, the creams definitely help to condition the leather, um, help to preserve the, the health, overall health of the shoe, mm -hmm. keep them around a little longer in that drier climate. Yeah, dry. absolutely. Yeah. Well, and it helps with the color and the refinishing. This one is, I think I'm done with that really one. Good. You know, I call it the Mirage. Yeah. You know, it's like the Shoe Shine Mirage. You really it's have to be careful with yourself. Yeah. This is actually probably one of my best. That's looking really good. You know, and it does help the more you shine your shoes and do the mirror gloss mm -hmm. and then break it down a little bit, rebuild it, break mm -hmm. it down. You, you know, if you have a foundation of hard waxes, it makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. to come back. Mm -hmm. But I often have to stop myself because, you know, you can chase that perfect mirror shine all day. Yeah. I mean, you could literally spend all day and never that get to the perfect, perfect. shine. Yeah. So I have to, have to say, you know, be careful. No one to hold and the it. other thing I do is I'll put it on the ground. Mm -hmm. Because, again, if you look at it like, oh, gosh. You just nick it? I just nicked, so there you go. Damn. Oh, that's depressing. Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the other problem is, you know, you yeah. nick it on the table and there you go. Gotta start all over, yeah. Oh, well, there we go. So we'll see, we'll see how quickly I can fix that. Right. <laughs> that that's terrible. Oh, that's depressing. That's why it's like, you know, I call it defensive walking. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you have, it's like, I'm more worried about where other people are stepping than yeah. like where I'm stepping myself. Yeah. Oh, it's like whenever I'm in New York and I'm on the subway, it's one of the things that makes me most nervous is some person. Because not only will it ruin your shine, but you can ruin a pair of shoes if you, if you uh, compromise the hard countering. Mm -hmm. I mean, and have you, you ever seen a pair of shoes that like, has a dull, like, soft spot in the toe? Down to the bare leather. Yeah, once you do that, yeah. like, there's nothing you can do to fix it. True. Unless it's black, you can kind of build up that wax. Well, you can build up the bit. wax, but like, we have a pair of Allen Edmonds we got off eBay that it's like someone just stepped on the toe cap and it oh. looks like... Oh, like smooshed it down. It smooshed it down. Yeah, and there's that kind no, of stuff is, is pretty hard to correct. There's, there's no correcting it. No, there's it's not, like that no. hard counter has been totally ruined. It's like if I sat on this hat. Yes. Well, 
we got a friend, you know, this Graham who owns uh, Monte, or he owns Optimo Hats. He sold like some hyper expensive, expensive Monte Cristi to someone, which is a straw hat. Mm -hmm. You know, you can spend thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on a straw hat. So we had a customer that had, you know, probably like a five, six, seven thousand dollar hat, you know, like a real collector's piece. And he was out somewhere and someone walked up to him and said, wow, that's a beautiful hat. Took it off his head, took it off his head and threw it up in the air and a ceiling fan just whacked it oh. and like cut his hat. And he was like, you've got no idea. Wow. So it's like shoes. I'm like, you know, I'm so afraid someone's going to step on a pair of my shoes. And yeah. Like, oh yeah, here's a hundred dollars. It's like, you don't really know. Nope. Yeah. Doesn't cut it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Got to keep those arms out. Keep that that bubble a yeah, little wider. A little bit of a yeah. you know defensive push. That's right. So how are you coming over? That's pretty it's good. In there. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. I have to say, I mean, you know, the uh, the stocking really can work magic. It's I've not bad. I've seen some people really do amazing things with it. Yeah, I learned from a gentleman at the mall. Did you try the thing. mirror glass at all? Or uh, is that? Yeah, oh. actually, that's I believe that's what I'm working with. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, you can see it's cracking up a little bit just because mm -hmm. again how dry it is. Mm -hmm. But it's got a totally different texture. I mean, it's it's dry, almost sandy, you know, whenever you put it on, just because, again, it doesn't, kind of you right? know, if you, you compare it to the wax yeah. or the Pat Deluxe, it's it like doesn't have all those kind of wet, yeah. I mean, it's the solvent that liquefies the waxes. Yeah, this is definitely more like buttery. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. smooth. It's like mm -hmm. warm butter, where that is like, you know. So explain a little bit of the difference in when you would want to use this one over this one. Well, I, I think that they both work great together. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're applying it to the entire shoe, you'd use the Pat Deluxe one or two coats max, because mm -hmm. if not, if you apply too much hard wax, you see it's kind of a white residue begin to build, and that's okay. just the wax is cracking, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but if for a mirror shine, I really think of the uh, mirror glasses like that base. Mm -hmm. And then you come on top of it with the Pat Deluxe. It's got those solvents. Think of it as like wet sanding, mm -hmm. you know, like a high gloss finish. Mm -hmm. And so the two of those, like I'll have them together and I'll, you know, put a coat of the mirror gloss on, which again is going to provide, you know, those hard waxes. Mm -hmm. I'll let it dry. One of the benefits of the mirror gloss is it dries pretty quickly. You can see it's already drying. Yeah. And then I'll just come back on with a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, just a few taps of the Pat Deluxe, which again, picks up some of those solvents to kind of help me work this. Okay. And then it's just a matter of buffing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, oftentimes that's... Got to let the project do its work. You just have to like do the work, right? Yep. So what do you like most about doing YouTube videos? You know, I mean, I think the ability to reach new people Mm -hmm. is what's incredible. I mean, I enjoy sharing stories. Mm -hmm. You know, the YouTube channel really started as, as a way for us to just kind of share, you know, the story of what we're doing and show people how to do it, teach people something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just love, you know, like the artisans we meet, I mean, people mm -hmm. like you, just the mm -hmm. opportunity to, you know, share other people's stories and craft mm -hmm. uh, with other people is, is really incredible. And, you know, YouTube, I mean, it's amazing to think that, you know, two years ago, we spent zero dollars on, on video production, mm -hmm. and here we are, we've got two full-time, you know, video producers, you're coming out yeah. to visit with us, and, yeah, you know, just to being able to connect team. with people and, you know, do cool things. So this one's back up. Look at that. Pretty good. Looking really good. I'm going to keep that away from the edge of the table, <laughs> and I'm going to see if I can fix this. Oh, that's. But, you know, I mean, to publish something and then, you know, get tens or hundreds of thousands of views is... It's pretty cool. And it then is to really see cool. people like, you know, we've got a really simple video called the Berluti Knot. Mm -hmm. It's how to tie a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, every time I visit your you page, know, that's the first one. That's the first one. And yeah. it's like, for whatever reason, it's our most popular video. Yeah. And I think my favorite comments are like the guy who says, it's 3 a.m. and I'm watching a video on how to tie shoelaces. That's right. You know, question mark, like. Yeah, how did I get there? And I'm like, here? you know, how did I get there? And I'm like, you know, that's awesome. It's like, here's this guy, you know, and doing who knows what, and here he is watching our video. Yeah. And then, you know, there's the other people that are like, ah, oh, I watched this video, and now my shoes never come untied. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, just to be able to, like, affect change like that and kind of make a difference. I mean, not that it's, like, changing the world, but... Um, but it's, it's a good way to find out how to do things yeah. and, and discover well, things that you didn't even know. And I think it comes back to the artist. And I mean, the fundamental mm -hmm. thesis of the Hanger Project is that you can afford to invest in quality if you know how to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean, afford to invest in quality? Like, whenever I say that it's not 
go out and buy the most obnoxiously expensive thing that you can afford, you know, in some, you know, exuberant display of wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's invest in quality. What is quality? I mean, quality is something that's supported by craftsmanship and mm -hmm. integrity. And so, you know, the fundamental thesis of the Hangar Project is really about supporting craftsmanship, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, what really got me into this business was just the nostalgia of that, you know, you could go and have a suit made the same way today that it was made 100 years ago mm -hmm. by one guy mm -hmm. who makes suits for you that you develop a relationship with over the course of your adult life and maybe even have the privilege of introducing your children to. I mean, where do you see that today? I mean, it's just it's like it's so anti, like, 1980s America. Kind you know, of bring like, it back to the roots, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, you know, I call it the, you know, that I say we're in, like, the, you know, the rebound to quality. I mean, the children of baby boomers largely were not taught quality by their parents because consumption was so much about consuming more mm -hmm. of a lower quality. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, there's no meaning in it. And so, you know, having one or two nice pairs of shoes that you cherish and mm -hmm. take care of and have worn for 20 years is so much more awesome than you know, having 10 pairs that aren't comfortable, that you don't like, yeah. don't feel good in, don't look good, yeah. and that you're going to throw away. Yeah, I've had uh, some stories with some customers that, you know, one gentleman uh, who tells me every time he comes in, you know, I've had these shoes passed down to me from my grandfather, and they're probably a 30-year-old pair of Allen Edmonds that, amazing. you know, the grandfather took great care of and pride in, in taking care of. And then this gentleman comes to us because we take pride in taking care of shoes, and we don't really take into the account of what we charge. We take pride in it and we yeah. do quality and people come back because they see that. When you see guys that may not have the money to invest in a lot more of a, a vast variety of shoes and have one or two pairs of 300, 400 entry level, what I like to mm -hmm. call nice shoes, they take more pride in it. And even if it's just that one pair that they have um, and they're coming to me to get a shine, um, I think you, s you sense that more of that kind of that ownership and taking yeah. care of it. Um, and that's why they come to see us. Yeah. yeah. That's great that you can play a kind of a role in, in helping. Do you, do you do a lot of teaching or just kind of developing people's narrative of like, okay, you've got this nice pair of shoes. Let me teach you how to take can't care of it. I mean, you can't reach yeah. them all. Well, some people just don't yeah. care. Yeah, you're right. You know? I, I mean, I always say that our customer is a man that enjoys dressing well. Mm -hmm. There's guys that dress well because they can or they can afford it, mm -hmm. but don't care. Right. But you know, our best customers and the ones that we enjoy the most are the guys who actually enjoy dressing well. It's something that they put effort and pride it's into. It's more of an ownership. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know that can be done at any budget. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, my first shoes. I mean, you know, were you know s discount sale shoes that mm -hmm. I waited all year to get on sale. Yeah. You know, for two or three hundred dollars in college. And, um, you know, if I had one or two nice pairs, that was plenty. Yeah, I can relate. I think, you know, just being in the uh, in retail scene for over 15 years now, I've accumulated quite the array of shoes. Um, and I barely wear shoes. How many pairs do you have? Uh, close to, I'd say, a little over 30. Um, and I live alone, so I don't have to share that closet space, <laughs> so that's a little nicer. Yeah, I'm uh, with my son, right? Yeah. So I, um, What's your son think of shoes and, and you know, what, are you, what you're doing for the, the fashion? Industry? You know, he, uh, I think he's, uh, I don't know, fascinated by it in, in the way that any six-year-old can. I mean, I hope to pass on to him just the importance of dressing well mm -hmm. uh, and taking care of things. I mean, so I think I'm done. All right. Well, let me just uh, buff the last little bit out of here. These are looking really good, Kirby. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's the mirror glass and the high shine chamois. And it's like, you know, every single time that I shine a pair of shoes. I always wish I'd done it sooner. Yeah. Did you ever have that notion? I just can't find enough time to shine. Well, I mean, I'm the honest. same way. Yeah. It's like, you know, I shine shoes for a living like you, right? right? And yeah. I shine a lot of shoes on the channel. And so it's kind of important for me to have a, a nicely shined pair of shoes. But inevitably, like, you know, the shoes looking a little down. And it's like, you know, you put it off. I put it off and I put it off. Mm -hmm. And then finally, like today, I'll shine it. And I'll be like, what was I waiting for? Because this looks so much better. Right, yeah. Uh, and makes it makes you, you feel, feel better. better. It does, it really so does. So we had a shoe shine Sunday with Joe Hammerjani, who's a shirt maker, mm -hmm. a good friend of mine. Known him for a long time. Met him in Hong Kong. Okay. You know, whenever I first, it's the first trip I took for the Hanger Project, right after I got married. Yeah. Nine years ago. Okay. And um, 
Anyway, we did a Shushan Sunny with him that should have aired by now. And, uh, you know, he's busy traveling all the time, so he's not shining his shoes. Mm -hmm. And I was able to put a mirror gloss on his shoes uh, in the video. Yeah. And, you know, he called me up that next day and he said, you wouldn't believe how many customers commented on my shoes. Yeah. Well, everybody's looking down at their phones and it's the first yeah. thing I see. Well, that's funny you say that. Yeah. I've never thought of it like that, but you're yeah. totally right. Yeah. But I think it just goes to show that, you know, something most people overlook and neglect and would say, why does that really matter? Nobody notices your shoes. Really mm -hmm. couldn't be any farther from the point. I right? agree. Or not farther from the point, but farther from the case. Mm -hmm. Because people do notice. Yeah. I mean, do you see that? I mean, how do you talk about them? I mean, the importance of shining shoes? I mean, because it is important, yeah. but how do you explain that? Uh, like, well, why is it important? Um, for the overall investment factor, you know, like you don't go out and buy a new Mercedes and then just never wash it and never get the old. But you know, somehow it's not even about the product though. I mean, yeah. it's not about, I mean, in one regard, it's about taking care of the shoes. Mm -hmm. But really at a much, a much, you know, kind of higher level, it's about really taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're it's, right. it's like, you know, yeah. it's a grooming. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about, you know, showing people that you took the time and energy to present yourself well. It's a reflection of and yourself. And it's a reflection of how you hold yourself. Exactly. Um, that's what I think most people miss. It's like, look, don't shine your shoes, you know, you know, for me. Yeah. Shine it for you. I mean, yeah. You wouldn't buy a... You know, those first impressions, I mean. Yeah, you wouldn't buy a good quality product from somebody that's wearing cheap shoes. Yeah, well, you know? I mean, I have another friend that, you know, was in the military. And then he went to go work in private sector and uh, doing government work, and so constantly interfacing with people in the military. And his mentor brought him into his closet one day and said, pointed at the floor, and there were two, you know, black bald spots in the carpet. And he said, do you have any idea what those are? And of course the answer was no. And he says, that's where for every day on the last 20 years I've shined my shoes in mm -hmm. the morning. Mm -hmm. And was just talking to him about like, you know, the importance of integrity of like, you know, doing that shows people that, you know, you took time in the morning to make sure that you were well presented out of respect for them. Exactly. I thought, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Anyway. Keep some sort of routine yeah. going and then kind of look like you're a little bit more professional. Well, thanks well. for coming today. And, thanks, um, you know, we're going to film some more videos with Jason. So we're going to be at Nordstrom's tomorrow. And uh, we're going to be in his shine stand. You're going to be showing yeah. us, you know, the tricks of your trade. Yeah. So we'll get to turn these tables a little bit. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think we're going to film a, another interview over some pizza and some beer uh, with you it. later today. Cool. So uh, check that out on Jason's channel. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can find him at, at, at Dornstar on uh, YouTube. The link, of course, is going to be uh, in the description of this video. And uh, anyway, we look forward to helping uh, the well-dressed take care of the wardrobes with you. So, Jason. Thank you, Kirby. Amen. Thank Appreciate you so much it. for Thanks coming for out. Me. Appreciate it. Cheers. You. Thank you.